Hey, it's Laurence Bradford from Learn to Code with me, and today I'm going to be talking about how I get my WordPress sites online. And oh, you can follow me on Twitter at Learn Code with me. So, first things first, let's talk about WordPress. WordPress is a content management system, it's built uh, using PHP, it's open source, and it's extremely popular. About 20% of the websites online use WordPress, meaning there's tons of resources and documentation and information for people just getting started. So before we move forward, I just want to point out the difference between .org and .com. So WordPress.com is free and you can create a site and they would give you a domain name and the domain name would be something like Laurence.wordpress.com. On the other hand, WordPress.org is, I think, more popular, and that's where you can actually um, have your own domain name, your own server, and just use the WordPress content management system to run your site. And this is what I use for um, Learn to Code with me and other sites that I work on. I use the WordPress.org. So here's a quick rundown of the two tools that you need to get started uh, with getting a WordPress site online. Um, you're going to need a domain name. You're going to need a server. You're going to need an FTP. You're going to need a text editor. And kind of optional, I guess, you're also going to need a MAMP, which stands for Mac, Apache, MySQL, PHP. So, and, the, and just the suggestions behind each, that's what I use and what I'll be using for this demonstration. But for each one, um, except for MAMP, I guess, uh, there's a lot of different options. There's a ton of places to buy domain names. There's a lot of different servers. There's different FTPs, and there's different text editors. So do your research, and depending on your site and your needs and your budget, you know, something could be better than something else. But again, this is just what I use, and I'll kind of explain why uh, throughout the video. So when it comes to domain names, I buy mine at name.com. And the reason why I like name.com is because a lot of different domain extensions are available to purchase. I use the Bluehost um, server, but they only have so many domain name extensions available. On name.com, I can get things like .work, .money, .click, .band, .space. So that's one of the reasons I use it. Now, really important, when you buy your domain name, unless you're buying it at the place that you're going to be hosting your website, you're going to have to change your name servers to point to the correct server. So what does that mean? I'm not going to get too technical, but this is uh, my domain name, LaurenceBradford.me. And this is just, you know, within my admin panel and every place, you know, is kind of different. This is actually a video. Look, they have, you know, what is a name server and it describes it here. But basically, when I buy my, bought my domain name, the name server is something completely different. I change it to match Bluehost's name servers because essentially it's kind of saying like, hey, this domain name needs to point here to this server. And then Bluehost verifies that the domain name is pointing to the correct server and then I can kind of configure it on Bluehost. So this, whoops, so this is all that I do for uh, my domain name. So there's a lot of different places where you can host your website or um, you know use use a server to serve up your website. I've been using Blue Bluehost I think for five years or so, and I really like it. I'm used to it. Um, it works for me. I think they have pretty good customer service, and they also have um, the ability to add on domains. So. For without any additional money, at least to a certain point, I can add different domains onto my like account and host them through Bluehost, and it's all for the same price, which is pretty, which is pretty cool. 
I just want to also point out that I think Bluehost is really great for WordPress sites because they have a really easy WordPress um, install setup. But for other kinds of sites, I'm, I can't really verify how great Bluehost or any other server even really is. Um, in the past when I've dabbled with you know Ruby on Rails and uh, Meteor, you wouldn't want to use Bluehost to host those types of applications. You would maybe use something like Heroku or uh, DigitalOcean or something with um, Amazon Web Services. The, and Amazon Web Services has a bunch of different like stuff from CDNs and hosting and whatnot. So do your research. And again, this is you know very WordPress specific, of course. So this is my Bluehost cPanel, which they just updated recently. And when I want to add a new domain as an add-on, I come over here and I have a bunch of domains listed down there. And I would press um, assign a domain to your cPanel account. So I would type in the domain name. It would make sure that the name servers were pointed to Bluehost. I would add it as an add-on domain name. And then I would create a new directory for it and assign this domain and then when you're done um, it'll be added to your domain list and sometimes it takes a bit to have everything kind of move over so it may not work um, automatically but it could take a few hours but it's fine so then when I'm done adding my new domain here I would go back just to the main cPanel And to install WordPress, it's seriously so easy. You press install WordPress, and this kind of redirects you redirects you to uh, it's called Mojo Mojo Marketplace. Um, this is like an offshoot of Bluehost. Press install, and then you would choose a domain name you want to install it on. Right? I already have. Um, something on you know my learn to code me domain name so I'm not gonna actually go through the process completely but you'd press check domain name and then I would I usually press show advanced options then you can assign your admin username and your admin panel or admin password so when this would be what you would use then to log on to um, your WordPress site when the install was complete. You would press, you know, I agree to the conditions and then you'd press install now. And it really takes like 30 seconds even if that. And when you're done, it'll show you the credentials. It'll also um, send you an email. So it'll say like this is your, you know, your site, log in here. You click the URL and it would bring you to something like this. Learn to code with me slash WP admin. I'm already logged on to this site, so I'm gonna see, hold on. Dot com. All right, give you a good example. Okay, great. So then, um, whatever you, you when, when you set up your domain name, where was I? When you set it up here, you would use that admin username and admin password in this form username password you'd press login and then you would be brought to your WordPress panel which would look something kind of like this and then once you're in here you kind of can get going you can choose you know um, a theme and get on your way start writing some posts start creating some pages so you have your WordPress site set up and you maybe you have you know a theme going great but how do you edit the files in the theme how do you add CSS how do you make things look better how do you change you know the layout of the the theme and maybe add some functions whatever I use an FTP and I use Cyberduck there's a lot of information online about Cyberduck specifically with um, even um, uh, Bluehost in Cyberduck, they they have a lot of information. I'm trying to see if it's right in the 
fits right here. Oh, they have FTP there. Anyway, this is um, a whole, I'll link this up, a Bluehost and Cyberduck. They have a video and it shows you exactly how to set it up. But basically you would have, you know, your server, your username, a password, and you would set it up here. FTP can create a new FTP account. I have some here, as you can see. And then in Cyberduck, you would do open connection and you would put in the appropriate information. Again, it could be different depending on your site and um, Bluehost does a really good job with the directions. And also, um, Bluehost has a really good customer service team. I don't want to make any promises, but I've called them before with issues related to technical stuff and they've been able to walk me through it. So I'm sure if you were having a big problem with getting the FTP working, you could um, send them an email or give them a call and they could probably help walk you through or direct you in the right direction. So these are FTPs that I already have or like connections I already have and they're bookmarked. But for instance, this is my learn to code with me one. So this is, I really don't pay attention to any of this stuff and a lot of it is from Bluehost, like the WordPress installer. I could probably delete some of this stuff, but I sort of just letting it sit there. This is where we're getting good, right? WP content, my themes, my plugins. Um, this is my, I have like the cache kind of plugin that's pretty intense. All right, so this is the only theme I have right now in my uh, site. And this is editing, this would be editing right on the live site. So say if I open my style.css and I change something, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to change my site, my live site. Um, the changes will be reflected literally on the live site. So if you're doing this and the site has no traffic, you're just playing around, it's an experiment, um, maybe you're doing a test on a subdomain, which I've done before and now I kind of regret, but that's besides the point. Um, this is perfectly, it's perfectly okay to build on the live site, but I don't and I wouldn't recommend it, especially if you, again, aren't experimenting and you are getting traffic. You should probably use something like um, MAMP. And MAMP is, MAMP is for Mac. Uh, for Windows, they have WAMP. And for Linux, they have LAMP. However, if you go to what MAMP.com, info. It's really easy to set up. I already have it set up, but I'm going to link to a video that actually walks you through how to set it up, a free YouTube video. It doesn't take long. Uh, the normal MAMP, this one is free, and this is what it kind of looks like once you have it installed and ready on your computer. You uh, would start the servers by pressing the, the button. Uh, mine are already running. You would close it. I just usually leave mine open to be completely honest. And then you have all of your files in this HTC Docs folder. So these are all the different sites I have on my local host. And they're not named, honestly, the best. They're, <laughs> I should have been better when I was naming some of them. But you could kind of tell, like, some, like, portfolio. Okay, that's a portfolio I was working on. WordPress is actually my Learn to Code Me site. And then site is my new learn to code with me site that I've been slowly trying to build. So what you would just do is after you have it running and all the files loaded, you'd go to localhost 888 and then you'd put in the right name of where your install is. So again, for me, for my new site, it's under site. Again, bad name. WP, and this looks familiar, right? It's like my FTP, but not exactly because... My FTP has some extra stuff from Bluehost. WP content, themes, and then I have a few themes right here I'm working on. But to see my site, the blog, go here. And this is running locally. So I can work on this. I don't have to be connected to the internet. And I can make changes. I can play around. Look, I can break stuff, case in point. And it's totally fine. So... 
once you have all the other stuff in place, definitely look into getting a MAMP server. It's free and it just makes life a lot easier. So I hope that this video was helpful and that you learned something. Oh, I haven't even, I totally forgot to mention the text editor. Okay, quickly. The, the other thing you need is a text editor to edit the files. I think that's pretty obvious. I use Sublime Text 2, and there's a bunch. There's Notepad++, there's Atom, uh, BB Edit. I think that's how you spell it. Play around, find one that works for you. They all basically do the same thing. But again, I use Sublime Text, and I really like Sublime Text. This is kind of what it looks like. This is my uh, CSS file. So... That's it. So again, I hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching.